the Eagles are kryptonite. But the last time we played them was week 18 of last season. We beat them 27 to 10. They're on a downturn right now. And I'll say this, even though the Giants took a step back, long term, I'd rather be a player on the Giants than a player on the Eagles. Because, again, I don't know the conversations that maybe, you know, you and Jordan have had or, you know, what the conversation we'll have with Fogg later on. But I know one Eagles fan that I talked to, he's done with this team. He wants it canned. Like these guys are aging. Lane Johnson's getting old. Brandon Graham is retiring after this season. Their window is closing. And I think as the veterans leave, Hertz is going to really get exposed. He's not an awful quarterback. I think he has good intangibles, Sam, as a quarterback, but his quarterback mechanics are just very, very messy. And they really only looked great when Shane Steichen was the offensive coordinator last year. It was Brian Johnson. He sort of took the fall, right? He was the lamb chop for Jalen Hurts. That's not a good reference, but you get the point. <laughs> this season, they have Kellen Moore, wonderful offensive mind, and it took him until week six to finally put together a solid performance where you can say, yeah, Jalen Hurts is still a quarterback that I would consider as a top half of the league quarterback. It took until week six, in my opinion. Maybe you disagree. But that, that's how I feel about him at this juncture. No, I agree. And that's something that um, Jordan, our residential Eagles fan on this show, has talked to me about is she wants Shane Steichen back. Like she wishes that he was never gone because he was an, a huge part of why that team got as good as they did. And from the losses on the, on the line, you know, Jason Kelsey, and even the the loss of Fletcher Cox, like it's very, very obvious how it's affecting this team. And we'll talk about Nick Sirianni, but oh my God, what a clown! I, I, I have like I have zero respect for that man. I wish I could find something to say good about him. I don't have any respect for him. Um, I don't know if you saw the. Uh, the uh, post game press conference where all he said was, We're just happy we got the win. He said it like seven times and he has all of his kids with him. And I'm like, You're you just won four points. You beat the Cleveland Browns. That's not impressive. So, and they had Devontae Smith and those guys back. And it's like, You're obviously, obviously, that wasn't the issue. The issue is just this team not being as strong as it was originally. Um, and Kellen Moore, I mean, Kellen Moore is a, a great coach, um, a great coordinator. And we saw that in Dallas as well, but uh, something's not clicking. And I'm pretty sure Nick Sirianni is the nucleus of that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't have too much respect from either going at it with the fans, making excuses for himself. And it's been a thing since 21, since he took or 22 or no, yeah, 21 since he took over as head coach. What's up, Andy Hopper? Uh, brew party from the stands, resident, Champaign, Illinois. How are you feeling, Sam? I'll let you take this one. First of all, thank you, Andrew, for commenting. Um, Saquon, it's going to be very, very interesting to see this game. Um, I know I saw a bunch of reports today about Saquon talking about how this is not that big of a deal. For us, it's a big deal. In my opinion, this is a big deal. I think that he's probably just downplaying it for the media but this is like for you to return after everyone after everything that happened this past offseason after everything that was going on in hard knocks it's a big deal it's a huge deal and I'm going to be feeling so many different emotions watching this game for sure like I'm I don't even know how I'm gonna feel until I'm actually watching it but I know that seeing Saquon in an Eagles jersey playing the Giants is going to make me feel some type of way i love saquon i wish him well i wish him success mm -hmm. he's going to score sunday andy if you're watching this you want to bet any time touchdown on saquon barkley he's going to score that. in this game and i'm telling you that with full-fledged confidence um but i don't like that he went to the eagles of course i don't like him for that do i hate him no i don't hate anybody i, I just i don't have it in me to 
but this is a guy that is fourth in the NFL in rushing. He's playing behind a better offensive line. The Giants had to use the money they would have gave him and Xavier McKinney to get Brian Burns. So we can talk about this till we're blue in the face. And Tyron Tracy running for 110 yards tells you why you don't have to pay a running back $14 million a year. But it's the leadership of Saquon that you miss. And you've seen Daniel Jones step up and take on some of that leadership role a little bit more vocal this season. What up, Tom Major? Thank you very much. Um, friend of mine from Naples, Florida. Hope you're doing well as well with the storm, Tom. Appreciate it. Very welcome. He's adding it. Are you adding it? Do you think Saquon scores Sunday? I, I do. might just do that. I might just do that. Ryan Day. <sighs> Ryan Day. I dislike Ryan Day just as much as Nick Sirianni, Andy. <laughs> Strongly dislike. I, I, I don't appreciate him uh, calling out Lou Holtz on, on uh, when Notre Dame played Ohio State a couple years ago. Um, and what's up, Kevin Xavier, saying, hey, guys, let's go Giants. That's right. We've got the Giants-Eagles preview here for you, folks, if you're watching. We love you all very much. And appreciate it. If you give us a like, not because we like the likes, it helps with the algorithm. Mm. Get us shown to more people across the internet that would be beautiful um but good news sam this week malik neighbors and devin singletary both rumored to return now brian dable did state today that it'll be greg joseph and matt hack again this week most likely no jamie gillen graham gano's graham gano is eligible to come off of ir his window will not open gunner olszewski's window will not open yet and we need Gunner back badly. That punt returner we have, it's like calling a fair catch is like a death wish for him. Like he will not call fair catches. I don't know if you noticed that on Sunday Night Football. I don't even know his name. I think it's Emir Smith Marset. Mm -hmm. He just takes all these hits. He doesn't call fair catches. He's bobbled punts. I, I'm not confident in him at all. And it's it's been a problem. Like we need guys back healthy. And thank God these two are back for Big Blue. For sure. Andy says, I like the likes. Andy, um, I like working with you as well. We're going to be working together uh, right after this, I believe. Had to uh, double up tonight. Um, but, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with the Giants as far as the injury and personnel department goes. Malik Neighbors has missed the last two weeks with a concussion. He's still working through the protocol, but it's looking very promising. Devin Singletary nursing that groin issue but sam we talked about earlier on this show that the eagles were trending downward from 2023 right they got off to a hot start they finished the season one and five they've picked up right where they left off in 2023 the reason why they're three and two this the scheduling excuse me it's worked in their favor so far if you look they're only three point favorites in this game last year or the year before they're at least seven point favorites against the Giants, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I was actually, I was just looking through my FanDuel app just now. Um, I'll probably place that Saquon bet later because I just could not find it. Um, but I was considering taking that Giant, like Giants with the spread, like, because it's three points. Like, why not? You know, it's uh, just goes to show that even the, sports books are realizing the type of play that the Eagles are doing. It's just not up to par mm -hmm. and it's not at all where they used to be. So, you know, the, it, it just kind of, the numbers show, you know, the sports books really show it and it's, it's pretty crazy. And we talked about too, the Eagles coming off a 20 to 16 win against the Browns. They have not won any game by more than five points this season. So this will more than likely not, Sam, be a five-point or less game if history continues to trend. And history does have a tendency, unfortunately, to repeat itself when it comes to bad NFL omens um, <laughs> or in general. But I think the biggest thing, too, we cannot afford to fall to 0-3 in the NFC East. The division is up for grabs this year. Washington is in first place right now. Their schedule gets a lot tougher. I love Jaden Daniels. I think he's already proving that he's a top 10 quarterback, but 
their schedule is going to get tougher at some point, and they're not going – they're not a team, in my opinion, that's going to win 12 to 13 games. I don't see it. I see them maxing out at like 11. You know, I think they're going to hit a little midseason slump a little bit, Sam, as the schedule right. gets tougher. And mm -hmm. that's why it's so important that the Giants start to win these games. A, a team like Philadelphia, like if the Giants win on Sunday, Nick Sirianni might not make it back down the Jersey Turnpike on Sunday night as the head coach. I mean, that's how bad this is. Like, the Giants are three-point underdogs, and they should not. And that is, I think, partially it's a credit to the way Joe Shane has built this roster with Brian Dable and Brandon Brown and Tim Mara over the past three seasons. But it's also due to the fact that the Eagles are trending downward, and it's coaching. It's coaching, and I, I hate to say it, Sam, you have to throw Howie Roseman in there as well it has been very very concerning they're running through offensive coordinators like water and they seem to like to poach a lot of our former players <laughs> not not just saquon <laughs> yeah i know we have quite a number of players that are in the quote-unquote revenge game this upcoming weekend and i just i know that just from talking to an eagles fan pretty much daily um, Jordan says, like, she loves Howie Roseman. She loves the moves that they make. And for them, like, in that moment, it's, like, really receptive. And, like, it's, like, he he gives them exactly what they need in that exact moment. But long term, it's, like, not – I don't know. Like, the foundation seems to not be as solid as he thinks it is. Um, but he definitely goes out there and gets things done for them. Like, I'm not saying that he doesn't because he really do, does do that. But, dang, they – I don't know what it is about Giants players. They all want to go to Philadelphia and, like, they, sure. But it just doesn't doesn't really make any sense. Look at this, Andy. Brian Dable yeah. is in his slim, shady era. <laughs> he, is, he looks so thin. It's, like, unreal how much weight he lost. He said he went from, you know, what he was now to just overweight. And wow. personally, I don't even know if he's overweight anymore. He's really – he's continuing to – good for him, though. Good for him. Very happy Absolutely, for him. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, prioritizing his health, as he should. Um, and he says, I think it's too early for that. Yeah, um, I'm realizing you're probably that right. Bears Commanders has already been flexed next week. Kudos I mean, to you guys. Picks number one and two makes a lot of sense. I think every week Jaden Daniels does something that impresses me. Like it, every single week. He is a phenomenal quarterback. And, and him playing up against Lamar last week, I mean, and that's the guy that everybody's comparing him to. He put They put up a fight. It wasn't, they, you know, the Ravens didn't run away with that. His worst game statistically was against the Giants. <laughs> Amazing. Just, just saying. Um couple more comments here. Dable has lost a ton of weight. I did not recognize him at first without the sunglasses on. Yeah. yeah. No, um, he's a different person. But, yeah, former Giants on the Eagles. We know Saquon. Nick Gates, backup lineman, former starter for the Giants. Jack Stahl, who sent the off spent the offseason here, is now there at number two tight end due to the Dallas Goddard injury. He didn't even make our roster. What were we thinking there? James Bradbury. On injured reserve, he will not play. Paris Campbell, all of a sudden, who looks like an NFL wide receiver again. Yeah, what's that about? <laughs> what the heck is that? Paris, literally like garbage on our team. He's like a Hall of Famer in Philadelphia. Like, what the heck? What quarterback are the Giants taking in the top 10? Uh, Andy, we're not even in the top 10 right now. We're 12 right now. Yeah, I don't know. If there's going to be a quarterback available uh, that the Giants will like, because I think Sam, I had this conversation with a coworker the last couple weeks. The writing's on the wall for Daniel Jones. We all know that, right? Bridge quarterback, call him whatever you want. I don't want to move on from him until I know we have our quarterback of the future. I don't want to take a quarterback just to take one, and the Giants. The Giants showed us that. They could have easily taken J.J. McCarthy uh, sixth overall. They did not do that. He didn't even go into the top ten. Now, Andy, I'm not saying another year of Danny Dimes. What I'm saying is 
You can draft the quarterback. Doesn't have to be in the first round. Red shirt. You save more money if you release Jones at the end of 2025 than right. you do 2024. Mm -hmm. I think my personal opinion, Jones should still be on the roster next season because I think the Giants are in a good enough cap situation where you should not release him because you're not going to save as much money as you want. And the Giants are in cap hell, thanks to Joe Shane. Um, so, yeah, that's my thing there. And eventually have the rookie take over next year. That's if you're able to bring one in. Right. You know, what do you yeah. think of that? No, I 100% agree with you. Um, I think that it just at this point, it's like year after year after year, we've constantly said, you know, this is the year Daniel Jones has to prove it. This is the year Daniel mm -hmm. Jones has to prove it. And whether it's an injury or what have you that has expanded this, you know, test for him to see if he's, a, you know, our quarterback. It's like we don't have time anymore to wait for him to be a good quarterback. And, you know, you and I will sit there and we will support Daniel Jones until he retires from the NFL. I, I, I will always be a Daniel Jones supporter wherever he may be. But unfortunately, with our team, it's just not really working. And like we said earlier in the show, you know, he's not consistent. He's not consistent, and it, it's unfortunate. I do want to answer Andy's question, though. You know, I've been all over Carson Beck, but lately, Andy, he has not looked great. Mm. He he looked bad against Mississippi State last week. I don't know what it is. If I know Georgia's having a lot of internal issues right now. Uh, three of their last five transfer receivers since 2021 have been arrested. Um, so it, it's been that bad. Like every, every month, Sam, you're hearing about one Georgia player or multiple Georgia players getting locked up for something dumb. Like what? Like what have they been arrested for? Well, one got arrested for, um, uh, what was it? Domestic abuse. Oh, jeez. Um, you can look in. I don't want to get into too much more detail than mm -hmm. that, but it's – it, it, it's bad. Kirby Smart does not have control of that team, unfortunately, and it's a problem. So, yeah, maybe uh, other options I've looked at. I'm concerned about Quinn Ewers' medical history. Yeah. Cam Ward has looked good, but the problem with, with that is I don't know how he finishes the season, and he was a G5 quarterback up until last year. I want to see what he can do when he plays the meat of ACC opponents, and I think that starts this weekend at Louisville. A lot of reckless driving and speeding stuff, too. Also true. Okay. Um, dumb things that college kids do and right. grown adults do, unfortunately. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, Kirby is also shoving opposing players on the sidelines as well. That's right. Van Buren, the quarterback, got shoved. I don't know if that was intentional, but that looked really bad. The presentation looked awful there. But Isn't Kirby Smart like the highest paid college football coach? And he's... He's the best, in my opinion. That's crazy to be pushing mm -hmm. opposing players. That's crazy. I think he is right now the best football mind in college football. But, man, there are some, like, blatantly obvious things that he just doesn't, like, social cute. Like, he just doesn't get it. Yeah. Um, but let's get to our keys of the game, Sam, before we bring up our, our guest. Um, Saquon Barkley returning to MetLife. We talked about how we're feeling. I think we can both agree that we're not going to be able to shut him down. That's impossible. But I think containing him to the point where he's not uh, dominating the game. You know, the Giants' run defense has given up nearly five yards per carry this season. And I think the most important thing is, will the Giants fans try to get to him mentally? Like, how will he be greeted? I don't know. Um I could see him struggling early on, but, you know, late first half, early second half, picking it up, putting the wheels on, and scoring a touchdown. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. I have a feeling that he's going to come into my life and people are not going to be happy about it. I have a feeling that they are going to – he's going to get booed. Uh, you know, it's kind of just the nature of the game. I mean, if Tom Brady is getting booed by Patriots – fans as he's returning to Foxborough as a Buccaneer. There's no way. There's no way Saquon Barkley doesn't get booed. Um, but yeah, I 100% agree with you that I think he's just gonna, he, he's gonna try and show off. You know, it's just like, you know, seeing 
an ex in public, you know, it's like, you don't, you want to look as good as possible. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that he's going to ball out. As the Dodgers take a two, nothing lead. Uh, Sam, oh. what else do you think is key for big blue on Sunday? Cause there is a real possibility. The giants could pull this one off. I think we definitely have to lean into our, how strong our defense is right now. And the fact that Jalen hurts and this offensive line is incredibly vulnerable. Just the kind of the way that we were doing with Joe Burrow last week, get him down. Like don't let him throw the ball. Don't let him run. Don't let them tush push, whatever it may be. Stop it as much as possible. And then get, get the, get the points on the board. It's literally exactly what just happened on Sunday night. That's just the bottom line. And I think that that's, one of the biggest keys to the game is just pressuring Jalen Hurts and getting through that offensive line because it's very possible to do that. Yeah, I mean, look at the Eagles this year. Their turnover ratio is not good, minus six. Their left tackle, Jordan Mailata, is doubtful. Doubtful. He'll likely miss a couple of weeks. That likely means Fred Johnson or Makai Becton will start in his place. And not for nothing, too, I mentioned the Giants lead the league in sacks. They're fourth in QB hits. And I think, yeah, like you said, get Hurts uncomfortable. He's coming off his best performance. Smith and Brown are both back healthy. But I think, too, the same thing we just talked about, getting pressure, we got to do the opposite with our quarterback. We have to protect him with Daniel Jones. You know, we don't know right now. Josh Azudu is taking first-team snaps at left tackle. I originally fought Neil, Sam. I was wrong. Azudu is probably going to start. But who knows what Dable is thinking. And the Eagles have some decent pass rushers. You know, Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, Brandon Graham, who's owned the Giants throughout his career. Yeah, no, definitely. The, this, the, You know, we, we can't just sleep on this. They're not a horrible team. Um, and it's divisional. But it is not out of the realm of possibility of us being able to beat them. Yeah. Um, I think, too, you want to exploit the Eagles' defense early because – Sorry, guys. I live by LaGuardia Airport. There <laughs> planes flying over my house at 30 at night. It's um, all good. I'll be heading over there in the morning or to Kennedy, actually. Um, the Eagles defense, they're giving up more points than what they score. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. Um, and yeah, too, I think, Sam, uh, the Eagles. They haven't stopped the run well either, despite what they have up front, right? The Georgia guys. We're talking about the Georgia Bulldogs being in trouble. Well, they're causing trouble in, in the pros. There's a lot of Georgia Bulldogs in the pros, and Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis are two of them. And yep. if we're going to establish Devin Singletary, Tyrone Tracy, uh, good luck. Good luck. Yeah, I remember when they – drafted uh Jalen Carter and Jordan was calling them the Philadelphia Bulldogs because it was just like, like it was all the Georgia's roster um yeah and it's kind of I feel like this will be a pretty low scoring game just because of the defenses and the lack there of an offense on both sides um so maybe bet the under possibly but yeah I think that yeah. the de the defenses are going to be the ones that rule this game um, and now let's get into some players to watch for Philadelphia, Sam, two or three, however many you want to talk about. Um, who are you watching for the Eagles this week? Folks, not necessarily the superstar players, but anybody that you think could have an impact on this game, Sam. Um, I am going to say, I'm going to do the obvious. I'm going to say Saquon here just because of how we've been talking about him and how he's going to come out and most likely going to be running all over the field. Um, I'll say I'll even say Jalen Carter on the defensive side because he's just been dominating recently. Um, just get it, getting the ball, you know, and making sure that the their offense that they're going up against does not, you know, convert to first down or anything along those lines. So I'll say those two. Awesome for me. I want to throw in rookie cornerback out of Toledo, straight out of the Mac, Quinion Mitchell. Mm. Going up against another first round rookie in Malik Neighbors, um, considering he clears concussion protocol, which he is on track to do, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, Mitchell against neighbors is going to be very, very exciting. Mitchell has six passes defended on the season, still looking for that first interception. Uh, obviously, Saquon, that's a given. We've talked about him the whole show. He still has incredible jump cuts. He's changing directions well. He's using his offensive linemen as shields and short goal line yardage situations. But for me, it's not wide receiver one. It's wide receiver two, Devontae Smith. Mm. Um, and four games played this season, he has 24 catches for 303 yards and two scores. He will likely draw the Cordell Flott assignment. I don't know about you, Sam. I think there's more of a drop-off between Devontae Smith and Cordell Flott, as where I think Smith is significantly better than Flott. A.J. Brown, in my opinion, even though he's probably a top 10, 15 receiver, he's not significantly better than Deontay Banks. Yeah. And, and A.J. Brown's kind of been MIA, apart from the injury and everything along those yeah. lines. He's not doing nearly as much as he's done in the past. No. Uh, granted, he's only played in two games this season. He's looked very, very impressive. But in four career games against the Giants, just 15 catches, 254 yards, and one score compared to Devontae Smith. Ooh. In five games against the Giants, three touchdowns, 312 yards, and 23 catches. So Smith has been more successful uh, against Big Big Blue. I mean, the, the good thing here, guess who they don't have anymore? Boston Scott. Yes. Who always runs over us every single time. So that's a plus in that department. We don't have to worry about him this week. Absolutely. That's well put. And I think for Philly, too, it's going to be key. Whoever steps up at tight end, because Dallas Goddard dealing with a hamstring issue, uh, likely not playing this week. I don't want to say that for sure, but hamstrings are tricky. He only yeah. played three snaps against the Browns this past week. Grant Calcaterra came in had four catches for 67 yards. Expect Jack Stoll to get some more playing time this week as well in 12 personnel sets. Jack Stoll spent, spent the summer with the Giants, but went back down to Philly, took the Giants' playbook with him most likely, and could give yeah. uh, Calcaterra and Kellen Moore a few hinters on how to exploit this Giants defense. So, mm -hmm. Sam, let's get to the Giants. Who are we watching for Big Blue? Oh, man. You know – Nobody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I definitely, I, you, you gas this guy up and I kind of was indifferent about him, but Tyron Tracy has really just like stepped up to the plate and I'd love to see him shine even brighter. And I definitely want to keep my eyes on him and see how well he can rush against this defense. Cause it's a, it's a, it's a true testament here to him as a player um, going into this type of game. And um, I'll even say Wandale as well because he's been stepping up to the plate with, with Malik Neighbors gone. Like, seeing Wandale Robinson contributing to this offense. I mean, Jalen Hyatt's still on a mill carton. Haven't seen him. But, you know, okay. Wandale <laughs> – exactly. Wandale has been doing what he needs to do. Um, and hopefully, you know, Dexter Lawrence, you were saying, didn't practice today, but I, I'm sure he will be playing this weekend just a consistent defensive guy for us. So I'll say those three. Yeah. Um, I think for, for me, whoever starts for Andrew Thomas is going to have to be watched, even oh, yeah. whether it's a Zudu or Neil for sure. Um, going up against the fierce Eagles pass rush. I'm going to go with Tyler Newbin on the defense, a little bit of a floater wild card pick this week. He quietly leads the Giants with 39 tackles. Now, granted, you never want to see your safety lead the team in tackles. However, Newbin, like Pinnock, likes to play um, on that intermediate level of the defense closer to the line of scrimmage. Um, Belton is more of that free safety. We've been seeing more of a three safety look the past two weeks defensively because of the matchup when teams have good receivers. Shane Bowen has countered with the five DB set and the three safety look. It's worked. It's work, and the Giants have not been burned the last two weeks by star receivers, right? Metcalf, quiet in week five. This yeah. past week, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, sure, they got their bread and butter, but they didn't blow the top off this defense, and it worked. So if you're going to stop A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, I want to see a lot out of that secondary. And it for me, Tyler, Tyler Newbins looked really, really well, and 
Defense only has one pick through the first six weeks of the season, ladies and gentlemen. Bold prediction here, Tyler Newbin gets his first interception of his young NFL career this week off of Jalen Hurts, who has four picks Heck. on the season. I like that. Um, and with that being said, one more here for me. Um, I'm going to go with DJ just because I think the Eagles are a team he's always struggled against. Yeah. He's always struggled at home. But – the Eagles do tend to give up some rushing yards to the quarterback. He leads the Giants with 14 rushing first downs on the season and 164 rushing yards. And through the air, he hasn't been horrible. Week one and last week were the two biggest concerns for me, Sam. That sack number against him is pretty low, too, from where it was last year. Now, continuity on the O-line definitely concerns me just a little bit. For sure. But, Keep an eye on um, DJ for sure. Always. And then quickly, I guess, injury report for Philadelphia. Um, Milton Williams, defensive tackle, did not practice today with an ankle. Jordan Mailata and Dallas Goddard, both nursing hamstrings. They do expect to get um, Darius Slay back. And for the Giants, Sam, we're the only team in the league that's missing both our starting kicker and our starting punter. Not a good sign at all. Brian Burns did not practice today either. Hopefully that's nothing serious either. I mean, the Giants, the injury bug, it was going to catch up to us eventually, was it not? It was, it was. And uh, right after the game, I sent you the message about who I think player of the week is, and I told you who I think was the horrible player of the week, and it was Greg Joseph, because what the heck was that? I mean, our kicking, especially as a team that doesn't score as many touchdowns and does rely on a lot of field goals, you got to hit those. You got to hit those. It's horrific watching Greg Joseph miss those, those uh, kicks last week because he makes those two kicks. Like, it's a different game, and we're having a different conversation today. So, yeah, it's – uh. I, although I love Jamie. I, he's fantastic for us and always has been. And um, definitely hope things work out with that. But for as a punter with a hamstring, I know hamstring is always going to affect a player, but specifically a punter, not, not looking great. No, not at all whatsoever. Um, and for – of the Giants wide receivers are on the injury report this week. Neighbors expect them to come back. Bryce Ford Wheaton missed last week's game. Wandale and Slayton, they're just banged up. Those are natural um, weekly injuries. So, all right. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, folks, do have a quick announcement. Our guest for the evening has had some work issues. So I think what we're going to do, Sam, is we're going to have to pivot, okay. give our game predictions, and then I may just um, do something with him after the fact um, okay. just to get up maybe like a short or some quick content up because I know we're on a bit of a time crunch tonight. But we'll go slow just in case I hear anything differently over the next couple minutes. We still have 10 minutes to go, but... Uh, who do you think wins this game and why? Do the Giants have any shot here to pull this out? So last week when I did my game prediction, I, I did a pretty high score because I was very convinced that we were going to be able to battle. Um, not thinking about the fact that the defense was going to absolutely just push the Bengals down and not have Joe Burrow score as many points as he normally does. And I realized a lot of with my predictions, I go a little bit too high. I think – as I was mentioning earlier, this is going to be a pretty defensive game. I think that it's going to be a pretty low score. And with the spread being a uh, plus three for the Giants, I, I feel confident in that. And I feel like with the, the bottoming out that the Eagles are currently on, like they are just not looking confident. They're just not looking good. I think that the Giants could get this win. I'm not like I'm, I'm not going to put my life savings on it or anything. But I think a low-scoring game, I'm going to say 17-14, to 14, the Giants get the win. Because you know what? I, I, like, I feel like every time I've picked the Giants, 
they've been doing pretty good. So I'm going to stick with that. And uh, definitely, definitely I'm not going to be like shocked if we actually pull out this game. Absolutely. Um, so you have 17, 14 giants and Sam, when you've picked the giants and I haven't, it's usually worked in your favor. It sure has. So going to go that, Eagles here. Oh, I feel like I have to, right? It's one I mean, of those. Why things. Not? I don't want to, but I'm going to, <laughs> um, before we even went live folks, just so you know, I'm not, I don't have a hand up my, my, my ass. Uh, I was picking Philly before the show. Um, right. So with that being said, I'm going to go Eagles final score, 25, 22, uh, okay. weird, weird score, but I think field goal game does it. I think the giants easily cover that spread, but I think the biggest thing, Sam, Andrew Thomas is out, you know, Daniel Jones, inconsistent streaky. We don't know how the O line is going to look. There's a lot working against the giants and with Smith and Brown back, I don't know how they're going to hold up. I don't know how, but that's my prediction. So what we can do folks is maybe next five minutes or so. Um, actually we just got an, an update, probably not, but he will do reels for us and send it to me tomorrow. So I will sort that out with fog. Cool. Stuff happens in life, folks. We apologize about that. Um, but I did want to ask you, Sam, and since Fog can't be here, um, I do want to ask you, will Nick Sirianni last as the Eagles head coach through the end of the season? You know, I'm, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no, especially if – the Giants get a win on Sunday and they beat the Eagles. I think the the burner under Nick Sirianni's ass is going to get kicked up a notch and everybody's going to be like, oh, this is it. He can't even beat the Giants. Da, 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 da. So that's going to be a big story if that does happen. Even if they do get the win over the Giants, I mean, we're even seeing Eagles fans quote unquote celebrating this past win against the Browns. Like, it's a bad win. I know that like, there's no such thing as a bad win, but technically it doesn't look good. Honestly, I'd love to just – I know you've said it, though. We kind of want him to stick around because of how detrimental he is to this organization. But I think Howie's going to get so sick of him, and I think he's going to go. Um, yeah, it's one of those things for me where it all depends on what happens week by week. When I'm looking at Philly's schedule coming up, it's us, obviously, this week. And then after that, they're at the Bengals. They have the Jaguars at home, another team who might fire their coach. At Dallas, another team who might fire their coach. Home against Washington at the Rams. There's a lot of, a lot of winnable games coming up where the Eagles will likely be favored. And I imagine they'd be favored against both the Bengals and the Jaguars. So I think, Sam, if – the Eagles win this week. I don't think the Bengals are your typical two and four football team. Now we all know the saying, your record is who you are, but with Cincinnati, I think they have potential there to upset Philly. I'm trying to think if it happens mid season, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen after the Steelers game. They're going to lose to the Steelers. And they'll have – actually, I don't know if that makes sense because three divisional games left in, in the season. I was looking at the schedule backwards there. Hmm. You know what? Okay. Got something even better. Okay. They're going to lose at the Rams on November 24th, and he'll be fired after. I like that. Before December even starts. Because the Rams, not a great record this year. Mm -hmm. Lose to them, not ideal. Pack it up. But, folks, we want to thank you so much for tuning in to the show tonight. Again, we will uh, get some content up with Fog. Unfortunately, couldn't do it on the live tonight. But um, I'll definitely follow up with him on that once we sign 
off. Um, Sam, any final thoughts before the Giants take on our most hated rival in the Philadelphia Eagles? Just like don't embarrass us. <laughs> like, please. I'm I'm picking you to win this week. Even if you guys don't win, make it a make it a game, make it a battle. I like I'm gonna have to talk to Jordan next week. I, I need I need to come with some sort of something coming from this team. So let's let's do what we gotta do. Play a good game, adjust without Andrew Thomas, do what we have to do. And I, I can I can feel them the possibility of a win here. Yeah, it all for me, it all depends how the Eagles game plan around Malik neighbors and how the Giants can stop Saquon Barkley or contain Saquon Barkley because that will open up other areas for Jalen Hurts on that Philly offense. Folks, if you are tuning into us for the first time, want to check out more of our content, remember to follow us on all of our socials below. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, at Big Blue Avenue. She's Sam Cardona Norberg. I'm Tom Scavetta. We wish you all an awesome evening. Thank you all for all the comments, likes, and subscribes tonight. We appreciate you. And without further ado, let's go Big Blue.